Shortly before the Soyuz crew members left Star City for launch in, for the launch site in Kazakhstan earlier this month, I had a chance to spend a few minutes talking with Steve Swanson. We talked about his plans for this first long-duration mission of his career and the work that he and his crewmates had done to get ready for the flight. Why don't we start a little bit by talking about your, your training? I know that uh, you've trained in the past for shuttle missions. How is that different than your training for a space station expedition? Oh, well, first of all, the uh, flow for this kind of uh, expedition is much longer. It's two and a half years long. And you also aren't really training for many specific events like in a shuttle. Shuttle, we knew what we were going to do every day, and we were training for those specific tasks. And in a space station, you don't know really what's going to break. You don't know exactly what science you're going to do when you start the training flow. So you have to be able to more be a jack of all trades and, and get more skill-based training than you would on a shuttle mission. So you've been training for, for a good long time for this. That is a true statement, and I'm definitely glad to be almost over with the training part and heading on to uh, the actual doing the, the flight itself. Well, I don't know if it's considered part of your training for your expedition, but I know you spent some time here in the uh, flight control room as a Capcom. Is that, um, does that help you prepare? How does, it, you know, how does it build your relationship with the team here on the ground, anything like that? Well, I do think that's very important, actually, because I think it helps to really know what's going on in mission control. When you come down with a question or a comment or any other kind of a communication with the ground. If you've been a Capcom, you know what that means and how it processes through all of the MCC. And so having that idea, it can, your expectations then are, I think, realistic and you can really help the communication be much better if you have that knowledge. Do you have a lot of good relationships with the folks here on the ground who will be supporting you? I believe I do. I, I need to ask them to make sure it works on both sides, <laughs> but I believe I do. All right. Well, tell us a little bit about what launch day is going to be like for you. Well, launch day is going to be actually quite a bit of a long day. Um, we're going to launch three in the morning, uh, Baikonur time. And so we're getting up only around nine o'clock. We're going to have breakfast. I'll probably get a workout in. And then they want us to take a nap around maybe like one or two, get up again around six or so. And that's, we're going to start getting ready for the launch at that time. And uh, we're going to start off by, uh, uh, getting all cleaned up, that's one thing they want you to do here, make sure you take a shower, you're, you're clean to go, and then uh, we head on out uh, and uh, do a f few formal events uh, with writing our names on the, the wall of the, the rooms we stay in, stuff like that, uh, a couple ceremonial deals, and then we head on out to building 254 where we suit up in our Sokol suits, do a pressure check to make sure the suits are working well. And at that point, we head from there out to the launch pad, uh, climb on into the vehicle about two and a half hours prior to launch and then start doing all our checks with that. Again, we do a vehicle uh, seal or leak check on the vehicle. We do one of our suits also again, make sure everything is working fine, the communication is good on the vehicle and on the ground. And if everything's all ready to go, then we get to launch. Does sound like a long day, but uh, a good one, I think. Yes, it is a good day. Just a long. Uh, again, then after lunch, your day's not over. Of course, you have uh, in six hours, you're going to be docking the station and you have to go through the uh, leak checks of board the station to make sure you got a good leak uh, or not, no leaks between the Soyuz and the station itself. And then you can go and open the hatch and, and, and we'll have a little press conference at that time. And so it's going to be a long day, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, we talk a whole lot about all the science that y'all do on board the station here um, for Space Station Live. So can you tell us a little bit about anything that you're particularly looking forward to or anything that, that we should be looking forward to? Anything that you think is really interesting? Uh, there's many interesting parts or experience experience I think we're doing, but uh, one thing that for me I'm definitely interested in is the eyesight issue we're having with astronauts, and we're going to do a whole bunch of tests uh, from ultrasounds to OCTs to fundoscopes to all sorts of things, and to really try to figure out why the eyesight is changing for astronauts, and I think it's kind of important for as we continue on in our space exploration, we need to figure this out so we don't have many issues later on uh, for other astronauts coming who follow on behind us, I should say. Uh, so I think that's important. So what will your part be in the uh, eye experiments? Well, I'll both be the guinea pig and also the test conductor. So other astronauts up there will do the experiments on me and then I'll turn around and do the experiments on them. So we both get to do both ends of the deal. All right. Well, that does sound interesting. Thank you so much for talking with us. We'll be watching from here on the ground and wishing you luck. My pleasure. Thank you.